This is one of my all-time favorite graphs, and I'm a math teacher, so I like graphs. Anyway, what is it? And it's actually seen some updates if you've seen me report on this before. So this comes from 3D Center, and they have done one of the most consistent and longest running tracking of the GPU pricing crisis, along with Ethereum value, uh, GPU availability, uh, since the, uh, well, not quite since the <laughs> problem began, but since last January. So we're going on about a year and a half of data now. But they've actually updated some stuff. But it is important to understand that they are tracking um, very specific uh, market, right? This is a, a German market, and then they're doing a comparison to the US MSRP. And this is an average of respective lowest prices at major German retailers. And then uh, this also includes exchange to Euro and the 19% VAT. Now, one of the things that they've changed is this light yellow line. The light yellow line used to track Ethereum value, but they've actually changed it now to track Ethereum profitability. And now the correlation between the yellow line, the red line, and the green line seems to be a lot clearer than it used to be when it just try, uh, tracked Ethereum value. So for anybody who is saying that the price of graphics cards wasn't just down to crypto, well, maybe it's not just down to crypto, but look at the correlation of the, the yellow line with the green line and the red line, which means I should probably also, for those of you who haven't seen me report on this before, ah, explain what are the red line and the uh, green line. So the red line is AMD's Radeon RX 6000 series, um, average of best prices, and it's now for all cards. Uh, in the past, 3D Center had been using specific models that had been out since they started the graph. Um, and also the green line is now NVIDIA GeForce 30 series, average of best prices for all cards. So this is averages. It is for all cards, but it's just of their best prices. So higher end cooler designs, things like that, uh, aren't being taken into account here. Now the purple dashed line here is the availability of cards. So notice, um, maybe I should just disappear for a second. Okay. <laughs> Notice how over time the Ethereum profitabil profitability line gives us such a good idea of what the uh, availability is going to be as well as the pricing is going to be for the AMD uh, and NVIDIA GPUs. This is incredibly closely correlated and then with this inverse correlation to the availability. So I think that pretty much answers that question. So. Basically, we've seen a consistent decline in the profitability of Ethereum, leading to a consistent decline in the pricing of the graphics cards, and they're now incredibly close to MSRP. While we're not seeing the steep slope decreases that we saw uh, back uh, in like January going into February and March, it has slowed down. It's a little bit of one of those like asymptotic slowdowns as we get into uh, kind of that MSRP bracket. Now the problem is again, that this is tracking lowest prices at major German retailers. And also uh, this can hide as much as it shows because as they uh, explain in their article, which I've Google translated here, this was not written in English. Um, they're showing that price exaggeration um, from the core cards is worse. Because remember, we had cards uh, launch late, like the 3070 Ti and the 3080 Ti, 3090 Ti, with incredibly high MSRPs compared to what the core models were originally supposed to be, like the RTX 3060 Ti, 3070, and 3080 10 gigabyte. And those cards they're saying are still at an average of plus 17% above the list price. And again, that's an average, so individual models could be doing better or worse than others. So in other words, this makes things look a bit better than it actually is. And I'd argue that's especially the case uh, for NVIDIA with those TI models kind of, with their MSRPs set so high, kind of skewing their data close, close. It is true they're getting closer to MSRP on average, but those MSRPs are kind of too high. Whereas with the AMD GPUs, what I'm seeing is it's mostly the 6800 and above cards that are significantly above MSRP. Whereas the, um, the actually the 6900 XT has dropped a bit below MSRP at times, at least in the US market. Which brings me to, okay, this is what the averages look like in this particular market. What am I seeing 
in the, um, you know, what, what about the United States? What about if you're looking for particularly good deals? Well, I do track particularly good deals. Ah, now these do sell out quickly, uh, but we've got this over here on my community page. And so like this morning, actually it's probably posting before this video is, I just noticed, for example, a 6800 XT for $772. It's a nice cooler design um, on, from the power color Red Devil. And again, 772, these were listing over $1,200 just a few months ago, and these have uh, been declining. Although 6800 XT is getting to around the $800 mark and only rarely dipping below, although they have been, has been kind of the case. 3070s have occasionally been available for around $580, but they usually sell out instantly. I posted this deal and it was sold out by the time most of my viewers saw it. Um, RTX 3080s, the 12 gigabyte models tend to hover around $900 or up, but are occasionally breaking below the $900 mark as I saw here with this 3080 12 gigabyte. And the 10 gigabyte models are getting closer to that 800 to 850 range um, when you can get good prices on them. Now with AMD GPUs, um, I am seeing some good deals. We're seeing the 6600 XT. I found a deal where it was not only uh, just being marked $30 off at Newegg with their promo code, but then MSI also offered a $20 rebate on this card, which, you know, some people feel like those rebates are hit or, hit or miss on if they eventually process or not. Um, but if you factor that in, that's getting down to $340, down from its $380 uh, what is it, $380 MSRP. Um, think that was most of my recent, yeah, that was most of my recent deals I saw on GPUs. But why don't we hop in here real quick uh, and take a look at specific models. So if I just go to PC Part Picker, now to be clear, what PC Part Picker is gonna do here is they're gonna look for stuff that's actually ah, in stock right now, and they're not just this instantaneous up to the, the second deal finding place. So I like to use PC Part Picker priced low to high to get a good idea of where these GPUs are actually sitting when you're not hunting a deal that's gonna sell out before it would even get into the PC Part Picker, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, search process. So like 37, well, you know, let's just start at the bottom here. So 3050s look like they're still sitting over $300 uh, as far as where they sit in stock, although you can find them for less, and that is well above their MSRPs. Uh, 3060s, uh, this is a, uh, the, ignore that Ventus. Let's go RTX here. <laughs> okay, uh, 3060s had been coming down below $400, but now seem to, for the most part, sit a little bit above the $400 mark, which again is well above their MSRP. 3070s, finding them around $600 is uh, fairly common. And again, that's $100 over their MSRP. So we're still seeing a lot of uh, these GPUs well above where they should be. Now, I guess I skipped over the 3060 Ti, which is currently in around $530. So it is you know, between your 3060 and your 3070, but it's $130 over its MSRP. Uh, the 3070 Ti uh, is usually um, the best deals you'll find on that is $700. And then the 3080s, like I said, are coming in at around $850 unless you find some kind of crazy deal where there, I've seen them occasionally dip closer to $800. 3080 Ti's um, are coming in over $1,100 still. And this is what I mean about the graph kind of being... Um, you know, not entirely accurate, well, accurate, but like a $1,200 MSRP on the 3080 Ti is just way too high when you can buy a 3080 for much less when the 3080 Ti isn't that much faster. So while this might be $50 below the MSRP, the MSRP for this card is way too high if it had been set in relation to a normal market. Uh, I guess I skipped over the 12 gigabyte 3080, which like I said, is usually around $900, but I will occasionally find deals where it dips a little bit below. Uh, and then we have the RTX 3090 coming in still over $1,600 and the 3090 Ti coming in around $1,900. Now, if we do a roundup on uh, AMD GPUs, if we look at the RX, well, I guess we could start with the 6400. Um, which, you know, <laughs> it has its uses as a low profile thing, but there you go, $160, I believe that is its MSRP. 
we can take a look at the RX 6500 XT here at a, about $5 below MSRP. I believe that MSRP at $200. Um, now, jumping into the GPUs might want to actually buy for some uh, decent 1080p gaming. It's nice that we've seen the RX 6600 come in $30 below its MSRP pretty consistently now. I'm, I think that this is where, if you want to enter into some solid 1080p gaming, uh, this makes a lot of sense. It's going to outperform your RTX 3050 at everything besides ray tracing um, and do it for less money. Uh, due to the inflated MSRP. Now, the 6600 XT um, is now coming in, like I said, close to the um, close to the MSRP of the 6600 non-XT. And there's actually about a 19% performance difference between the XT model and the non-XT model. So it actually makes a big difference and could be worth uh, going up just a little bit there. Now, the RX 6700 is pretty much at its MSRP, maybe $5 above. Um, right here, at least on the lowest end, cooler designs. And that's nice to see as that competes with the RTX 3060 Ti, um, but is coming in significantly less money. Now, the 6750, we're seeing at $550, which I believe is its MSRP, but whether you think it's worthwhile to spend that little bit extra uh, when the non-XT, uh, well, when the non-50 model is uh, so much less, and you could just, you know, almost get to that speed with an overclock. Well, I'll, I'll leave that up to the uh, viewer to decide. <laughs> now, RX 6800s do come in around the $700 mark when they come in stock. Uh, these used to almost never be in stock, but they're now uh, in stock more frequently. And 6800 XTs, we're seeing about, like I said, $772. They're usually more like $800, but I, this is a particularly good deal this morning that you can find on my community page. And the, uh, that's still well above the MSRP for the 6800 class cards. Now the 6900 XT is coming in at $950 currently, which is $50 below MSRP. But again, that's one of those Halo product cards where the MSRP didn't make a lot of sense in the first place um, <laughs> as far as diminishing returns goes. And then we are seeing the um, 6950 XT is going for what's basically, I think was their MSRP, which is $1,100. But again, whether you think that makes sense over the you know, $950 uh, 6900 XT is you know, your choice. Now let's round out the news today with, okay, what about uh, new GPUs, okay? <laughs> so should you just wait to buy new GPUs? Well, we are expecting to get NVIDIA's 4000 series coming fairly soon, um, but it looks like uh, there's a recent um, rumor here. This is coming from Kapite, Kopite, Kopite, whatever, 7Kimi. Um, 3D Center, the makers of this lovely graph I was talking about earlier, uh, did talk, uh, basically reach out and ask um, some notable leakers, including Kopai and Greymon, about, okay, so should we expect the RTX 4080 to come first, followed by the 4090 and then the 4070? The reason we might expect that is that's what Ampere did with the 3080, 3090, and 3070. Or are we gonna expect the 4090 to come first, then the 4080, then the 4070 in that decreasing order? And Copite says, choose option B, 4090, 4080, 4070, and says, confirm. So not just opinion, confirmed. Now, we might wanna listen to Copite because Copite has a good history at getting things correct with these GPU leaks. Ah, excuse me, let me slide over here. And then the other thing that I wanna mention here is when should we get this? Well, rumors are saying RTX 40 series in mid-July. However, odds are, if this is even true, that's probably their announcement and their actual availability usually follows about two weeks after launch. And I say availability <laughs> in terms of, I'd imagine, especially if it's starting with the Halo product like the 4090, that this would be heavily scalped. And I would actually not expect our current GPU prices to come down much at first. If they slot in a 4090, I would imagine that its price to performance would probably stay about even with current cards. Maybe not with its MSRP, but in terms of what you'd actually be able to find it in stock for. So I would imagine the 4090, um, as far as when it initially launches, to actually
potentially be up in the $2,000 range, if not higher. Um, and you know, I wouldn't even shock me if we saw it going up into $2,500, $3,000 range. And for it to not to have heavy downward pressure on the current GPUs until we start seeing more like the 4080 and 4070 get in there. And if crypto prices stay down, then I think the GPU prices will come down to whatever their MSRPs are gonna be. But I am expecting, and again, this is just my expectation, I don't have insider sources. I'm expecting MSRPs to be higher this generation Absolutely. I think the, and, and NVIDIA was kind of queuing us with their TI pricing. Oh, sounds like my kids are waking up. So um, maybe I need to uh, end this video quickly, but I expect uh, high prices <laughs> on these uh, coming up. Um, a couple of quick uh, 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 updates that I wanted to get into, but we'll make it quick, is um, I'd report on handhelds with AMD's uh, Mendocino. Mendocino is probably how it's pronounced. Um, and it looks like those might not be super powerful, even though they have RDNA 2 graphics. The uh, rumor now is two compute units only on that. Now that's not officially confirmed, but is from a leaker who has got things correct in the past. So we might want to li listen to that. Um, and I think we'll end the video here due to my kids waking up a bit early today. And I hope you guys have an excellent day.